to speak to you this morning. Um, who's ever been in a challenging situation? Give me a wave. And all those you haven't waved, um, repent for lying. Um, you know, challenging situation. Well, there's a lady in the Bible, she is so famous that they named a book after her. Her name's Ruth. And Ruth was in a very challenging situation. The, the long and the short of the story is Naomi and her husband move from Israel because there's a famine and moves into a place called Moab. And, uh, and they get there and her, she has two sons and they marry Moabites and the father eventually dies and the two sons die. And so there's a mother-in-law and two daughter-in-laws left. And, and so Naomi says, I'm gonna go back home to Israel. And she says, you, daughter, you girls, you can go stay here. You can go back home to be with your family, whatever. And, and there's one of the daughters is called Oprah. She ran a TV host. She was a TV host show, um, um, very famous. And she decided to stay in Chicago. Um, not really, uh, and the other one is called Ruth. And Ruth makes this amazing statement in Scripture in, in Ruth chapter one, verse 16. It says, but Ruth replied, don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Don't we, wouldn't you like people like that in your life? Wherever you go, I, I'm there with you in every season. In any season, you know, the church should be the most united people on the planet in any season. In any season, when people go through challenging times and make mistakes, we don't write them off. We say, come on, we love you. Come, come on, be restored. In every season. Jesus' prayer, is a powerful prayer he prayed. He said, I pray that they would be one like you and I, the Father, are one. See, God wants His church to be one, be to united, to be together. Why can we be united together? Because we have the same dad. And so she, she says, wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. What a crazy statement to make for a Moab woman who has lost everything and she says, I'm gonna go where you go, Naomi, and your God is gonna be my God. I wanna speak to you on the topic today, the God of the overflow. Turn to your neighbour and say, are you ready for an overflow? Turn to the other neighbour and say, you're a little quiet. <laughs> So how do I live in this God of the overflow? How do I experience the God of the overflow? The first thing you notice that she makes God her God. So many people say, I'm a follower of God, but they don't make Him God of their life. They partially make Him God of their life. Maybe that they say, well, on Sunday you'll be my God, but on Monday I'll make something else my God. My career will be my God. My money will be my God. My family will be my God. None of those things are bad, but they're never designed to be your God because they'll never save you. There's only one who will save you. So make God your God in all your decisions, not some of your decisions. Don't make your emotions your God. Oh, I, I, I'm not feeling it anymore. Well, are you... Is that what God is saying? Or are you letting your feelings dominate your situation? Make God your God. If you wanna live this life of blessing, you have gotta say, God, Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. In the Western world, we all, we, many times we seek other things, all these things, instead of seeking the God who will supply all my needs according to His riches and glory. We, 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 instead of seeking the God who says, I'm not just gonna bless you, I'm gonna bless you, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. If we make God our God, he says, Ephesians chapter 320, it says, to him who is able to do super abundantly, far over and above, all we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. And verse 21 gives you the reason why he wants to do that. To him be the glory in the church. When you make God your God, he gets the glory. 
When you make things your God, the things get the glory. So we see this in Ruth chapter two, it says one day Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, let me go into the harvest field to pick up stalks of grain left behind by anyone who was kind enough to let me do it. And Naomi replied, all right, my daughter, go ahead. So she said, okay, God, your God's gonna be my God. But the second thing that she did is she, she got up and she positioned herself for blessing. So many people go, God, would you move? And he says, yes, would you? Win, win Adelaide. He goes, go and do it. You know, the Bible says the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. So the issue is never with the harvest, it's with the laborers. You say, if you wanna see lost people won, you gotta go reach out to lost people. <laughs> If we, if we wanna see our churches packed to overflowing, we gotta invite people. I always, when I first started the church, you know, we were sent from here, and when I first started the church, the first prayer I prayed, and I haven't stopped praying. God, fill your house. Fill it with your presence, number one. We, without your presence, nothing will set us apart. We want your presence. Fill it with people, because there's no use to having presence without people. You want presence for people, right? Fill it with people. Fill it with their friends and families. Fill it with resource. Fill it with favor. Fill it with. Bre- so I always say to our church, you need to be a person who, who comes to church and you're a bringer. You bring your faith. You bring your family and friends. You bring your freedom. You bring your community. You bring your agreement. Be a bringer to church. No use just turning up to church for ourselves. The church is for the city. It position yourself for blessing. Oh God, would you bless me financially? And he says, give. Oh no, God, I can't afford to give. Well, you won't re- step into this super abundant blessing if you don't step out and give. The Bible says, what you sow, you shall reap. So she positions herself in a field. She didn't know what field she was. She just wanted to, to get some blessing, to get some resource to feed her and her, her mother-in-law. Uh, but she didn't realize that she ended up in a guy's field called Boaz. What a cool name. It's like a gangster, Boaz. <laughs> Boaz, you know. But Boaz was a picture of what Christ was gonna do in the New Testament. He was the kinsman redeemer. It's a picture of Christ. It's the key revelation of this story. What was a kinsman redeemer? You know, I used to think it was kingsman redeemer uh, when I was growing up, but it's kin, family redeemer. My kin. You can tell I'm my brother's brother because of our hairdo. Because we're kin. Bold people are anointed, by the way. Oh, you hear people sitting there judgmental. <laughs> We're getting raptured quicker than any one of you. There's part of me in heaven already. <laughs> We're spiritual, Tony. You know, we've, you can tell the prayers. Those are bald are the prayers in the family. I'm joking anyway. What does the Kingsman Redeemer do? He, he was the Redeemer of the family's promised land. Jesus became the Redeemer of the promises of Christ. A yes and amen in Christ Jesus. So Jesus says, I'm gonna redeem you, even though you are a foreigner, I'm gonna redeem you into my family so you can walk in the promises of God. God promised Abraham, wherever your foot treads is your inheritance. The Bible says, New Testament, I'm of the seed of Abraham and his blessing rests on me. That means the promises that God gave Abraham are the promises for me. But in Christ, there's greater promises than Abraham ever had. And I have those promises. Why? Because of my good works? Why? Because of my my amazing good looks? No, because of Jesus redeeming me into His family. What's a Kingsman Redeemer do? They redeemed from slavery. We were bound by sin. We were enslaved to sin. But through Christ, He set us free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. That's why church should be the most freed place. That's why we should worship with freedom. Some of us worship in bondage. You say, not not here, of course, other places. You say, what do you mean? Well, you really wanna 
yell and shout praises to God, but you're worried what the person next to you thinks. You, you really, you know, God spoke to me this year and he says, every time you preach, I want you to lie on your face before me and just say, I need you. Now that sounds good when he tells you to do it, right? So he says, every time I preach this year, I want you to do that. Now I preach a lot in a year. On a Sunday, I preach four times. And by the fourth service, I'm tired. And I'm like, God, could the three count for the fourth one? But there's something in, in that that I'm not doing it religiously. I'm doing it because I'm saying, all right, God, I've got to walk in your obedience. But there are times I've been in very conservative churches and they're like just standing there in the worship and they're like, and I'm like, the Holy Spirit says, okay, go. I'm like, no, no one's doing that here. No one is lying on the, they will think I'm weird. But I did, I would, I'd lie down and just recently in South Africa, I lay on the ground and someone put a red cloth on me. <laughs> Their teams are quick, man. They're like, uh, like modesty cloth. I was lying on my face. I don't need a modesty cloth, that was good. <laughs> and it wasn't cold either, I'm like, I'm a good, you know. Sometimes we're enslaved by what we, people think. What will people think? I don't know. If, if, I, if I shout, what will people think? They'll think you're shouting unto God. That's what they'll think. If I clap, I remember I was sitting on the front row of this church and someone next to me was clapping really loud and I was, they were annoying me. I was like, be quiet. And God says, are they annoying you? And I said, yes. He said, well, if you clap loud, you won't even notice them. So I'm like, all right. And I didn't notice them. What, what was I, I was, even though I was saved, I was bound by the opinion of man. You know, sometimes as Christians, we do things because we're fearful of the opinion of man more than the opinion of God. We have the fear of man greater than the fear of the Lord. <laughs> and see, so we gotta be people who say, hey, I've had the kinsman redeemer. He's redeemed me from slavery. So I don't have to be enslaved to my bills. I don't have to be enslaved. In a, you know, you can be out of Egypt and still have a slavery mindset. God set me free, but then the people of Egypt, uh, the children of Israel says, oh, for the leaks of Egypt. They never walked into their promised land. There were only two that had a mindset of the promised land. That was Joshua and Caleb. And they ended up in the, pro in the wilderness for 40 years, but they didn't let the wilderness get into them. Why? Because they refused to live in slavery. And in the body of Christ, you can be healed, you can be saved, you can be set free, but you still can live in slavery in your thinking because you're worried about situations. He is our kinsman redeemer. I think church would be the biggest party on the planet. Because there ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. You see, people try to get high all over the world. They try to get high on different things. They get high on drugs, high on their careers, high on their relationships, high on, on, on alcohol. They try to get high, 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 high because people are trying to get high, but we got the most high. You can't get any higher than God. He is greater and stronger and He comes to set you free. And He says, wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So where God's Spirit is, there should be the most freed people. And the truth is this, our personalities aren't there to dominate our, our position. What does a kingsman redeemer do? It protects, it's the avenger of the blood. So it's a protector. When, when God comes into your life, His blood protects you. I love that. Everywhere I go. And we go into pretty crazy places, pretty, pretty crazy things around the world. And, uh, you know, I remember we were, we, were in, um, we were in China one time and Sam was there and, you know, we were in the communist headquarters in Shanghai doing a Christian concert. And there was a, a, a glass on this side that you could see through, but you couldn't see back into. 
And Sam, my wife, gets up and says, you know, we wouldn't be here today. We thank the government of China and all that. And, and, but, and, 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 but we just then went for it. And just the power of God, many people got saved. And this lady at the end of the service says, I want to speak to that lady. Who is that lady? And, and the people organizing a bit nervous. And they said, well, her and her husband started Planet Shakers. And she goes, oh, I want to talk to her. <laughs> and like, Sam's like, hi, hello. She goes, I'm in charge here. And, and she says, anytime you want to come, we'll give you a permit to do a concert like this. Anytime you want to come. Why? Because Sam wasn't intimidated by her situation. She knew the blood of Jesus had come and paved a way. <laughs> you can clap a bit louder for that. It's all right. You know, it's amazing. These things can hear. I remember I was preaching on freedom and I had a message come up on my TikTok on freedom straight after that. So just want you to know everyone listening on TikTok and uh, Instagram um, and, and X, um, Elon Musk, Jesus is the way, the truth and the life and he will save you. And uh, if you're listening to me today, God bless you, amen. <laughs> what did a Kingsman Redeemer do? He redeemed the family name and the future. And God gave me this little statement one day. He said, what you give to is what you live for and what you live for is what you give to. So Ruth says, I'm gonna give my life to pursuing the God of Naomi. And what she lived for was to live for the God of Naomi. What are we giving to is what we live for and what we're living for is what we give to. So I wanna, if I look at your life and I go, what do you give your time to? What do you give your resources to? Is what you live for. <laughs> then it, so she, she positioned herself for a blessing. She positioned herself for a blessing. That's why you're in church. You're not here just to fill in time. You're here to position yourself for blessing because my Bible says we're two gather in my name. There I am in the midst of them. There's, we're coming together in agreement. We're not just coming for a sermon. We're not just coming for a worship time. We're coming to position ourselves to encounter God. We're not coming just to fulfill our Christian duty. We're coming because we are positioning ourselves. We get in small groups because we position ourselves. We give out our finances because we're positioning Ourself. We praise uninhibited because we're positioning ourselves. I love this. And Boaz went over and said to Ruth, Listen, my daughter, say right here, come, come with us when you gather grain. Don't go to any other fields. Stay right behind the young women working in my field. See which part of the field they're harvesting and follow them. And I have warned the young men not to treat you roughly. And when you are thirsty, help yourself to the water. And they've drawn from the well. Ruth fell at his feet and thanked him warmly. What have I done to deserve such kindness? She asked. I'm only a foreigner. I'm only a foreigner. You know, as I said, we were foreigners from God. And when God redeemed us and when God come and blessed us, to, and when we first get saved, it's so amazing. We're like, oh, it's incredible. But many times we get familiar with the blessing. And what keeps you from getting familiar is thankfulness. Oh, I thank you. I thank you this morning, God. The air I breathe, you've given me. I thank you for the mind that you've given me so I can dream. I thank you for my hand so I can create. I thank you for my family. Or oh, they might not be perfect. You know, there's no perfect family. Every family is dysfunctional, but they're your family. I thank you for them. Instead of complaining about them, say, I thank you for them. I thank you for that they're gonna be this. I thank you they're gonna be that. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. The Bible says that, to let, that they were to enter His courts with thanksgiving. So I come with thankfulness. Ruth said, thank you so much. And when Christians keep their thankfulness, they lose their cynicism and their criticism. <laughs> Verse 14, it says, in the meantime, Boaz called to her, come over, help yourself to some food. So dip your bread in some sour wine. So she sat with his harvesters and Boaz gave her some roasted grain to eat. She ate all she wanted and still had left over. See her positioning, she positioned herself to get the attention of blessing. When you position yourself in the things of God, you get the attention of heaven. 
all through Scripture, positioned people through their hunger and their passion. They, they got the attention of heaven, the woman with the issue of blood. It says, if only I could touch the hem of your garment. She positioned herself. Blind Bartimaeus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He had positioned himself there, a whole heap of other beggars there, but one got the attention of heaven. Zacchaeus, little small guy, climbs a tree to position himself. And when you position yourself, you get the attention of heaven. I remember when God, when I was a young adults and youth pastor here, predominantly ran the young adults, Paul Gilling ran the teenagers. And I remember I was in a meeting and and God spoke to me and said, start a conference called Planet Shakers. And I said, God, what's that? So I came back and God says, just start a conference called Planet Shakers. So we did in this building. um, It was the old uh, building. And we we started this conference, 300 young people. The youth group, youth ministry of this church started a conference. And people started coming from everywhere. We would have 4,000 people in the room. It was jammed. And then then we had to go to two weeks and then it grew and grew and grew to 30,000 people. But I run into people all the time. I I was in uh, Kingdom City Conference a few weeks ago and and speaking at their conference and my driver, who's the campus pastor of their Perth campus in the city, and and, and he said to me, oh, when I was 13, I got on a bus from Perth and came over and it was in this auditorium that I gave my life to Jesus and now I'm a camp campus pastor and we have about 800 people in our campus and God's doing amazing work. Then I met another guy and he says, I was 15 and I came over from Perth and and I got saved and and now his company is worth $250 million and and he's, he's investing in the kingdom of God. You see, this church has been known for a church that positions itself for the attention of heaven and the greatest days ahead are ahead of us. You see, every time I go around the world, and preach. I come from this family. I come from this house. Every time Planet Shakers, we turn 20 years of age in our church in Melbourne in February, have had over 100,000 people walk the aisles to say yes to Jesus. Why, why is that? What is happening? Because we positioned ourselves for the attention of heaven. And it says, and when Ruth went back to work again, Boaz ordered his young men, Leave her grain, let her grains gather right among the sheaves without stopping her and pull out. Oh, this is just crazy. This scripture just, ah, get ready, put your seatbelts on, right? Just for this statement, it's just this statement. Pull out some heads of barley from the bundles and drop them on purpose for her. When you position yourself in the things of God, God drops things on purpose for you and for me to encounter. Oprah doesn't encounter the bundles of blessing. She's back home. But Ruth, on purpose, is like, wow, I'm getting so much here. Wow, this is amazing. Wow, this is incredible. And she would never have got those bundles of blessing if she stayed home and watched Oprah on TV. She would have never encountered the blessing of being in Boaz's field if she had just got caught up in doing the dishes. She positioned herself and God says, because you position on purpose, I'll position blessing on purpose. (laughs) And it says, so Ruth gathered there all the day and she beat up the grain that evening and it filled an entire basket. She carried it back into the town and showed her mother-in-law Ruth, who also Roasted the grain, gave her the roasted grain that was left over from her meal. And she said, where did you gather all this grain together? Naomi asked, where did you work? May the Lord bless the one who has helped you. So Ruth told her mother-in-law about the man in whose field she had walked that worked. The man's name was Boaz. May the Lord bless him, Naomi told her daughter-in-law. Watch this scripture. She is, he is showing his kindness to us as well as to your dead husband. That man is one of our closest relatives, one of our family 
Redeemers, when do you make God your God? When you position yourself, you get, and then you position yourself, you get the attention of heaven, and then what, God, what happens is her positioning led her to an overflow blessing. She wasn't just blessed for herself. Naomi's now blessed. And even her, even the, her past has been redeemed and honoured. She was positioned for an overflow blessing. You, I'm here to tell you, influence, no, our future's church, that this church over 100 years has positioned itself not just to be a blessing for itself, but it's built churches and released pastors and leaders all over the globe. And you've positioned every time, our band is playing in, in Nigeria in a few weeks, 800,000 people will be at that event. That, and that, that comes out of this church. So every time you release and position and say, hey, I'm gonna position myself for an overflow blessing from an overflow God, you touch nations and places and people. Just this week, uh, um, our team were meet, met with presidents, the first lady of Kenya, met with a, the prince of um, the, what, some other place in Africa, I can't name it properly. There were four or five presidents or kings we met with who are all going to have things happen in those nations' events for young people. Why? Because this house, this house said, hey, we're going to position ourselves for blessing to be a blessing, to see an overflow. And Futures Church, whether it's called Futures, Planet Shakers, other church names, out of this house comes blessing. And I'm here to declare there's even more going to come out of this house. There's going to be a hundredfold blessing come back to this house, but there's going to be a hundredfold blessing release out of this house compared to anything that has happened in the past. And what's happened in the past is amazing. So if you just think of Planet Shakers Church Melbourne, 100,000 people have walked the aisle. If there's a hundredfold blessing on that. Oh, I've got to hurry. Ooh, ooh, better hurry, hurry. Ruth 4, 13. Story goes on and Boaz took her into his home and she became his wife. When he slept with her, the Lord enabled her to become pregnant and she gave birth to a son. And then the woman of the town said, Naomi, praise the Lord who has now provided a redeemer for over your family. May this child be famous in Israel. Wait, 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 wait. Ruth, she's lost her husband. She's lost her father-in-law. She has nothing. Her mother-in-law says, stay here. She says, no, I'm gonna pursue your God. So she pursues him. And then she goes to the field to get stuff for the family and she's blessed. And then she gets the attention of Boaz and more blessing flows. And then she brings a blessing home to Naomi. There's abundance flowing on purpose, but it doesn't stop there. Now she's married to Boaz. She's a foreigner who's now family. We were foreigners, but we became the bride to the bridegroom. The church of Jesus is not perfect, but it is the bridegroom, the bride of the bridegroom. And so we are positioned to have access as the bride of Christ. That means whatever our Father has is available to us through His Son. He, His Son is the one who has redeemed us into the family. So there's no limit on you. There's nothing that can stop you other than what you agree with. The overflow increased so much she became the wife. But you think that's good, but it, and it's good, Isaiah 54 says, for your creator will be your husband and the Lord of heavens is his name, armies is his name. He's the redeemer of the Holy One of Israel, the God of all the earth. And you think that's great, I'm, I'm in the bride, I'm now in the family, I, I'm, I'm ama it's amazing, I was a foreigner, now I'm family. And he says, uh, I've got more. This is the God we serve. If it was just, he, he provided my need, that's awesome. 
But then he provided my need and abundance, so be a blessing. That's, that's incredible now. But now I'm the bride. I, I run the family business. I, I'm in control of some things under my, under my husband, the bridegroom. Now I'm a distributor of blessing. Now, I, now I'm a person involved in the family. I, I have access to everything the family has, but it just didn't stop there because her overflow became so great that her genealogy was blessed. Matthew 1 says this. This is the record of the ancestors of Jesus the Messiah. a descendant of David and Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Judah and his brothers. And Judah was the father of Perez Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. And Perez was the father of Hezron. And Hezron was the father of Ram. And Ram was the father of Amadadab. He was a rapper, first rapper in the Bible. Amadadab was the father of Nashon. He's Japanese. And Nashon was the father of Salmon. He's a fisherman. And salmon, salmon, see God likes sushi. Salmon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Remember Rahab the prostitute? And Boaz was the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth, and Obed was the father of Jesse, and who was Jesse? The father of David. And what does this scripture start with? It says, and the Messiah, a descendant of David and of Abraham. So out of Ruth, the foreigner, who had lost everything, had, had, had nothing, she said, your God will be my God. I'm gonna position myself and my positioning got attention. And then my, uh, my positioning got overflowed. So now I bring blessing, but it didn't stop there. I became family and now out of my seed, the Messiah comes. So you and I have been impacted by Ruth. Generations and generations. This is the God we serve. You might feel like I'm a nobody and God says, that's all right, Ruth felt like that and look what I did with her. You might feel like I mess up and He goes, that's all right, look at Rahab and look what I did with her. You might say, I feel like insignificant in my family. That's all right, David was forgotten when, when, when the prophet came and out of those people came the Messiah, came the one who changed our life forever and when you and I possess Position ourselves. The God of the overflow comes in. And you like go, wow. Wow. Some of you have come into this church recently. There's a heritage in this house, but you need to carry it on. Some of you have been in this church for a long time. Keep carrying it on. Keep releasing. What's in you? You know, sometimes in church, well, I remember I used to be involved and then you become a foreigner of involvement. No, you know, you need to become a family involvement. You need to position yourself. Well, I'm too busy. Well, you're too busy not to. The Bible doesn't say those who are planted when they want to in the house of God will flourish. It says those who are planted in the house of God will flourish. You're blessed. Futures church, you're blessed. 100 years is a miracle. Most churches are dead after 100 years. You are thriving and growing and impacting nations and the nations of the world. The best is yet to come. The greatest days are yet to come. There will be greater stories than planet shakers. There'll be greater stories than people have gone in the past. There'll be greater stories if, we position ourselves to the God of overflow. Wow. I'm the seat of this house. You think it's crazy? I'm the vice president of the world Pentecostal charismatic movement called Empower 21. Out of this house. 
So I get to minister to and, and influence people and connect with people out of this house. <laughs> I remember sitting on this front row feeling insignificant. My dad was a famous preacher and I'd have the devil say, you could never do anything. And then I got up and I was in a band called More Than Conquerors and I played a song and I went to introduce it and I was 15 and I got up and I said, this song's about Jesus coming back and my voice cracked, you really need him. <laughs> and we watched the video after because it was a video and we replayed it and replayed it and everyone was laughing and I was laughing on the outside and on the inside I was making an agreement that I'd never speak in public again. Then in this house, I was at a youth camp and my youth pastor rang me and said, are you coming? I said, no. I said, yes, I lied. He said, God told me that you don't want to come because you don't want another prophecy. And I came and that camp changed my life. And then Pastor Greg came and said, would you run an urban, a small group? He was in charge of the small groups in that area. And I came under him and we started a small group and it grew to 50 people. And then we had to partition it and it grew to 50 people again. And they said, would you take over the teenagers? I said, no. They said, why not? I said, because I believe in sowing and reaping. And I gave my youth pastors hell, so I don't want to receive hell back. But I did, and we had 20 kids. We started with 20 kids, and it grew to 318 months. And then they said, could you take over the young adults? And I, and I did from Ashley. And, 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 and so I, I look at this, and I go, it's what you agree with is what you empower. So I had a choice to agree with insecurity or agree with destiny. Oprah and Ruth had the same opportunity same opportunity, they just had different agreements, which led to different positions. I've gone over, Pastor Tony, I'm sorry. People are hungry. But it's, an, it's half an hour ahead in Melbourne, so you can wait for that half an hour. <laughs> but in this house, listen to me, listen to me, Futures Church. You're not called Futures Church because it's a nice name. You're called Futures Church because the Bible says the latter rain will be greater than the former rain. The Bible says in the last days, and a lot of people talking about end times, and there'll be wars and rumors of wars. Yes, all that's happening. You can tick off all the things. But it also says that in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. And it also says and the gospel will be preached to every nation. So where there's great tribulation and challenge, there's also great revival. And it's those who position themselves are those who walk in the place of the overflow blessing. Hello, thank you so much for watching this video today. I pray this sermon has blessed you, encouraged you and inspired you. You know, we may have never met. I may not know you, but God knows you. And I tell you that God loves you today. That even before you knew about Him, He loved you and He has a plan and a purpose for your life. You know. So many of us try to do this life, leading our life in our own way, trying to look for answers and peace and joy, but we all come up short. But God knew that you needed rescuing. God knew that you were looking for more. So in order to have a relationship with you, He sent His Son, Jesus, to come and connect with us, to live a life just as one of us, but to never fall short and to pay the price for the mistakes that you and I always make. You see, Jesus lived a perfect life that I could never live and you could never live. And He died in our place and took the punishment for my mistakes and rose again to life so you and I could have life. You see, I believe that when you believe in Jesus and you invite Him to be Lord of your life, you can experience the forgiveness and the peace and the hope, the joy and the purpose like you've never known before. You see, it's not about what we've done and it's not about who we are. It's just the fact that we have a God that is good that can turn things for good and loves you. See, He's a father, He's a friend. And if you invite Him into your life today, simply by saying this prayer after me, I believe you can have the peace and the hope you're looking for. So I'm gonna say this prayer and I'm gonna invite you to say this prayer after me. Wherever you are watching around the world, would you join with me in this prayer? Maybe you're listening and you once knew God and you've walked away. Well, I believe God could be getting your attention today to get back into relationship with Him. Maybe you've known religion, but never a genuine, real relationship with God. Why don't you say this prayer too? And I believe this can be the beginning of a great new day for you. Let's pray. Say this after me. Dear God, thank you for loving me and giving your life for me. 
I pray you forgive me for my past and you walk with me into my tomorrow. Let me know your grace, your forgiveness, your peace, your purpose, your joy and your hope into my life. I ask you lead me and guide me from this day forward. Be Lord of who I am in Jesus' name. I'm so glad you prayed that prayer today. I believe that as you did, the peace and the grace and the love of God comes into your life right where you are. You know, the past is real, but it does not have to dictate your future. Let the love and the grace and the Word of God go with you from this day forward. And I believe the best days are ahead of you. If you did pray this prayer, or if you want to know more, or maybe you're on the journey, why don't you flick us an email so we can send you some great material about following Jesus. Maybe we can connect you with a local church near you, or this church if you're near one of our campuses. And I believe there you can get around good people that would love to pray with you and do life with you. I'm so glad you prayed this prayer today. I'm so glad you're on the journey of following Jesus. I'm so glad you listened today. God bless.